Hi there, and welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about a web application firewall versus a next-gen firewall. Now you may be asking yourself, why would we be talking about this? But there's still some misconceptions out in the field concerning what the differences are between a WAF and a next-gen firewall. So let's discuss what those differences are, what a next-gen firewall can do and what it can't do, and why you probably need both in your environment. Let's get started. So let's first define what a next-gen firewall is. I like to use independent research or independent firms like Gartner, right? So Gartner defines a next-gen firewall as a deep packet inspection firewall that moves beyond port and protocols and blocking to add application level inspection. Also has the intrusion prevention. And the other big part of a next gen is taking in intelligence from outside of the firewall. So you think if you think of Palo Alto, for example, we're gonna be picking on Palo Alto in this video session, they pretty much check these boxes off, right? They go beyond normal layer three, layer four with their next gen stuff. They do some really cool next gen stuff. There's no doubt about it. And so they move to that application level, right? So they're able to identify an application on your network using something they call app ID. And so let's take, for example, Zoom. Let's say you wanted to eliminate Zoom from inside your network and not allow it to connect. Well, the Palo Alto has the ability to see that it is a Zoom application in the packets. And so you can either deny or allow it on your next gen firewall. Pretty cool stuff, right? Additionally, the intelligence piece that comes outside of the firewall, you could use for an example, wildfire is something that the Palo Alto has, and that's a outside the firewall type sandbox to where they take files that are coming over the wire and then sample them and basically, basically explode them into a sandbox to determine whether malware is there or not. So. Pretty cool, those are the next-gen features and that's how Gartner defines it. And that's really what a next-gen should have, uh, whether it's a Palo Alto, whether it's a Cisco or a Fortinet. So let's talk about a web application firewall and what the differences are real quick. So I like to grab, this is actually right from Palo Alto's website. They say that the difference, differences between a next-gen firewall and a web application firewall can be summed up in seven words. Basically, web application firewalls protect web applications. We protect networks. In most cases, enterprises are probably gonna have to implement both solutions. So I couldn't have said it any better myself. They're absolutely right. You're probably gonna need to have a WAF and a next-gen firewall in your environment. So now let's talk about next-gen firewall capabilities, what they can do and what they can't do. And we're gonna pick on, again, Palo Alto here because I'm gonna be using their device in our demo here in just a minute. So what can a next-gen firewall do? Well, it uses signatures, uses positive security, right? To, by whitelisting applications. So the cool stuff that we just talked about, the next-gen stuff, app ID, content ID, user ID, and then all of the anti-spyware, anti the anti-malware vulnerability scanning that they use in Wildfire, for example, uh, their sandbox type solution for exploding malicious files and seeing if they do have malware. Those are all the things that a next-gen firewall can do. And what what's make, makes them a great security device in your enterprise. So what can't they do? And this really comes down to protecting against the OWASP top 10. Now, if you're not familiar with the OWASP top 10, it's, that's fine. It, it, you go out and research it, just Google it. But basically it's a group of, of people who come together and determine what the top 10 attacks are against web applications. Now, Palo Alto does say their application layer seven protection. And yes, they do provide that. In, right, So they're able to identify 
an application on the wire and then they can block that type of application. They also can inspect files from malware and, and viruses. And they do this by using signatures and using wildfire, again, to explode that into a sandbox and to determine whether that file is malicious. So yes, they do have some layer seven capabilities, but they don't protect against the OWASP top 10. They can't protect against simple attacks like cross-site scripting. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started with a quick demo. Okay, so we're in the demo area. Real quick, I just wanna explain what the topology is. Right now, what you can see here is my AWS environment. And let me go ahead and zoom in a bit here so you can see, I have three nodes up right now. I've got a big IP, I have a next-gen firewall, which is a Palo Alto, and I have a vulnerable web app server, which is Juice Shop. So if you're not familiar with Juice Shop, Juice Shop, is a vulnerable web app that's used for penetration, penetration testing and for other things like this demo. So here we have, and I just wanted to show this so that I'm not trying to pull a fast one here, is that we have our IP addresses that have been assigned. These are the elastic IPs. The first one is the management IP. The second one down here, the dot 80, that is our IP for our application. And so, Traffic's gonna traverse from the internet from my machine right now into the Palo Alto, into the big IP, and then the big IP is gonna load balance or proxy that traffic to the web application. So, real quick, this is our OWASP juice shop application that we're gonna be attacking today. It's very simple, you can go out and find this on the marketplace, it's free. Also have a great GitHub and I'll put that link in the description below if you're interested in it. Let's take a look at our Palo Alto that we have spun up here. And by the way, I'll also put in the description my GitHub where you can deploy this exact infrastructure using Terraform. It'll bootstrap your big IP and your Palo Alto all with the same configs that I have set up here. So you really don't have to do anything other than run a few commands from Terraform command line to get this deployed. Again, you don't have to, you won't have to have expertise in setting up the Palo Alto config or the big IP config. It's all done for you via Terraform. So if we look at our Palo Alto here, you see we have a couple interfaces, right? And we can also see that we have our policy set. And let me come in a little bit so we can see this. So my policy I've set up here is to allow port 80. We're not using HTTPS here. We want to keep things fair. So allow clear traffic all the way through the Palo into the big IP and into our web application. We can see that our profile here, our security profile basically has everything turned on on the Palo. We are, we've got antivirus, blocking, we've got any spyware blocking, vulnerability protection profile is blocking, file blocking, me come in a little bit more. Wildfire, wildfire is also active, right? So basically we have all the buttons turned on, all the knobs turned on this Palo Alto from a security perspective. Let's head on over to the big IP and take a look at what we have here. So the big IP, we have a single BIP, right? And then behind that, we have our web application, right? So if we look at our pools, we have our web app here. And currently on our virtual server, we don't have the policy enabled, the, the WAF policy. So we're gonna run a, a quick command here via Postman, we're gonna run, run an attack on this web application. And we're gonna see what happens, okay? So the, for the purpose of this demo, we're gonna be using Postman. If you don't know or you're not familiar with Postman, that's fine, that's okay. This application is used for, for sending, it's really for sending calls to a REST API endpoint. And it's primarily what we do. 
In this exercise here, I'm simply sending a post request to the application. And the reason why I showed you the IP address earlier is because I wanted to show that the IP address here in my request is the same IP. So I'm not trying to pull anything, any wool over your eyes here, right? So in this case, I've added a content type header in the postman and I have a script in a, in a form of tag JavaScript, right? So this would be malicious. It is malicious. I'm trying to inject JavaScript cross-site scripting into this web application. And so I don't have the policy turned on, the WAF policy on the big IP yet. So when I send this request, which I'm sending now, I, sh I got a 200. And I can see here that I've received the content from the web page. So OWASP, Juice Shop, I can also see that I've got some script here. So I got a good page back. There was no, no issue with this from the big IP's perspective. And if we look at the Palo Alto, obviously we got a page back, right? So we didn't block anything on the Palo, we didn't block anything on the big IP. And we can see here in our traffic on our Palo that everything coming in is an allow. We did not get any, any block or anything like that. Okay, so now let's go back to our virtual server and enable the WAF policy on our on the VIP. Let's go back to security policies, and then let's enable our policy that we had applied when we launched our Terraform to spin up this instance. So let's click update. And now we have a web WAF policy protecting our virtual server and our web application. So let's come back to Postman and let's try another post to this, to our web application. Remember, we've now got our web application firewall enabled on the big IP. So hopefully we've got a block now. Let's see. And while we did get a 200 okay, because we did, did get a request back, we now see that our request was rejected. And we get this, if you've ever been blocked by ASM, our application security manager, our WAF on a big IP, this is a all too familiar page that you're gonna receive. It lets you know that your request was rejected and it's gonna give you a support ID to take to your administrator to find out why your, app, your request was blocked. We go back over to the Palo Alto, obviously because it was blocked on the big IP, it was not blocked yet on the Palo, and we can see that if we refresh, we have traffic that's all in the allow stage, right? So all the traffic just came through, no block there. If we come back to our security and our event logs, application requests, we can now see that we have a big red Warning right there, right? So, and a five, which five is the highest on WAF. That's gonna let you know that this is very likely a malicious attack. And so we can see down here in our request that was coming in that the content type that we used in our header, right? We see the script, it's right here. We can also see the user agent that was used, Postman Runtime. So it knew that I was running a, a Postman to send this request. So if we come over here, we see five request is most likely a threat and it identified the attack is cross-site scripting. So I hope that sheds some light on the difference between, between a next-gen firewall and a web application firewall. While next-gen firewall does have layer seven capabilities, they don't protect your application from OWASP type attacks or any type of hacker attack, really, that's gonna be using headers and doing crafty things with requests to your web application. So we go back to the old saying that you probably are gonna need both. You probably should have both in your environment. If you have web applications front-facing, public-facing, you should definitely have a WAF deployed. So until next time, I'll see you then.